Welcome everybody, it's nice to have you all back. In this video I will show you how to customize the homepage of your Moodle site. The homepage is the page that you get to when clicking on the home button of the left hand navigation menu and also when you click the button up here which we will rename in a second. By default the homepage is not the landing page so it is not the first page you see when logging in and also not the first page that students see when logging in. The default landing page is the personal dashboard of the users. If you like the home page to be the landing page after logging in, you can change that by going to your site administration, then select appearance and then click on navigation. And here you have to select site, so not dashboard, site, which means home site. Don't forget then to scroll all the way down and click save changes. Now the first page when users are logging in is actually the home page. Let's start customizing it now. Back on the home page you can click the gear icon and then select edit settings. From here we will now change the full site name which is displayed all the way up here as pretty much the title of the home page. So let's say teacher and student. We then create the short name which is displayed in this button here. You can maybe just call it home. That's pretty much all we have to do in the settings. We scroll all the way down and hit save changes. When we go to the home page now we can see that both names changed. Here the title and here the button. After this it is very important to create a nice and appealing front page summary where you welcome your users and you know maybe inform them what your Moodle site is all about. To do that you click again on the gear icon but this time we turn editing on. This lets us really create our own look on the home page. Now, for the summary, click on this little gear icon here and you can write your welcome summary in this text box. Try to use the different fonts and editing options to make the text really structured. You can, you know, use the paragraph style option or make things bold or italic or add links and clicking here even gives you a couple of more options. It might also be a good idea to add an image. To do that, you just click on the image icon and then click browse repositories. If you've already uploaded an image to your private files area, which is here on the left side in the left hand navigation menu, you can just use that particular image. I already uploaded one image, so I can just click on it, select this file, overwrite it because I've done it before already, and then you always have to provide description to your images. So we just say teacher and student logo and click save images. Now you can see it in the text box here. If you haven't uploaded an image in your private files area, you just go to browse repositories and upload a file here. I just now create a bit of text here and I'll be back in a second with you. Okay, I just created a little bit of random text. Once you're done with your summary, you just click Save Changes and you will see it displaying on the home page. Just like in your courses, you can add activities and resources right in your home page. So you could, for example, add a forum where all your site users can add opinions, or you can add a little welcome lesson where users learn about how to use your page or what you offer on your page. The most useful activity, if you really want to use an interactive activity on your homepage, would be a forum in my opinion, where you can also place news or information that you want everyone to see. However, I usually stay away from having interaction on your homepage. It just adds more to your workload and you can bring new information across using the label resource. The label resource pretty much provides all the same functionalities that we just had when adding the summary. But you can maybe divide it and just post updates here while the summary remains an overall summary of your site. So let's quickly add a label. As you've already seen me doing, you just click on add an activity or resource. Make sure you have to editing turned on here. Select resources from the tabs and then double click on label. Once again, like we had before, you can provide your information. But as I said, you might only want to provide updates here and no generic information. I just added my little example text and save and return to course 
So you still see the summary here and under it you have the label. Look, use colors, make it really nice, just play around a little bit. Not like I have it here, that's really boring. One more thing that we can add to our homepage are blocks. So a block is essentially a square with different kind of information. So this big block here, for example, is the homepage summary block. But we can add more blocks with more and different information. If you have turn editing on, you see this add a block button in the left hand navigation. When we click it, we can see all the blocks that we can add and what information they're providing. Just click on one of the blocks and it will be added to the website. So let's say you want to have a calendar for everyone. You just add the calendar block and it will appear in the right column. Or let's do it again. You can, for example, add a block with information about tags that users have created in their profile or in their courses. If you want to delete a block, click on the gear icon of the little block and select delete calendar block. And you can just confirm it and you'll see it's gone. Let's just add the block activity again, calendar and there it appears again. I personally would not recommend to have any blocks on the home page, but to keep the home page content as generic as possible. I would rather add all the blocks in the dashboard because this is where users' individual information are displayed based on their course enrollments. If you still want to add blocks to the home page, that's fine. You can have a look at the video where I explain in detail what all the blocks actually do. For this video, I just give you an example of one other block. Let's go to add a block and let's add the activities block. So this block displays all activities that you create on the home page from here. Okay, so we can just quickly add an activity again. What we just did, we created a resource. That's why it's not displaying label as a resource. But if we create an activity, what would be the quickest to do? Probably a quick assignment, just a random name. We scroll all the way down, save and return to the course. And now you see that this assignment here is in the activities block and shows the information about it. You can also move all these blocks around and change their position. You can simply click on the navigation icon of the block and drag it all the way down or drag it to the center, wherever you want to have it. Alternatively, you can go to the configurations of the block and determine which region of the page the block should be displayed. If you scroll down a little bit to the on this page section, you can select the region. But what we see here, only right is possible. I can't select anything else because I show you this big summary block is taking up all the space in the middle and you can't add anything under it except your activities and resources. So the only region that is left for the blocks here is the right region. That's why it's selected here. What we can do though is give the block a weight which determines if the block appears on the top or on the bottom. If you select minus 10, the block will always be on the top. While when select is 10, the block will always be displayed at the bottom. So let's see what we have here. We got the calendar at the top at the moment. So let's change it. Say weight at 10 save changes and you will see that the calendar made it all the way down here. One last important thing are block permissions. If you only want certain type of users to see a certain block, you can assign permissions to the block. So let's say we don't want students to see the tag block on the home page. We can click on permissions and can see the capability view block here. To the right, you can see all the rows that are able to view this particular block. So we can very simply take the capability away from the student by deleting their role from that particular capability. Just click on the bin icon and the student role is removed. Going back to the home page now, you as admin or as a teacher can still see the text block, but your students can't. On the other hand, if you want students to see the block again, you can simply add their role back to the permission. So we go again here, go to view blocks, click the plus icon and add the student role. All right, so that was the video about how to customize your homepage. I hope you learned something and see you again soon. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.